My name is Louise, and my husband is Eugene, and we have a five-year-old daughter. And when she was two, we started trying for a sibling for her, um, but unfortunately, it just didn't happen for us. The first time was really easy, really quick, so we were very certain that the second time was going to be the same. Unfortunately, it wasn't. I had two uh, miscarriages, early miscarriages, um, in the first trimester, which was quite obviously um, dramatic. And then a friend of mine um, said to me, "Go, just go and see the specialist at Vita Lab, um, just to get a different outlook or just a second opinion because my gynecologist said I should just keep keep on trying and when I got to Vita Lab I was, it was just they were amazing <laughs> the way they explained everything um, to us um, why we probably had the miscarriages and I think also the way Dr. Folschkink explained the reason why we are struggling, and a lot of it was to do with my age, because I'm older. Um, it gave me a lot of, funnily enough, a lot of closure around the miscarriages as well. I didn't feel, because I think there's always an amount of guilt that you feel when you have miscarriages. Um, and just the way he explained it and how I started to understand how the whole infertility or how the, how the whole process of fertility works, it yeah, it gave me a lot of closure around the miscarriages. Those were never going to be babies. It was always, I would always have needed this help and assistance at my age to, to get another baby. We never thought we were going to need IVF. I think we, because in the beginning you don't know what you don't know. You sometimes go into it not knowing what fertility or infertility means and all the very different things that you sometimes need to put your body through, your emotions through. And for us, I think we just went to get an opinion. And I think in the beginning, we just thought we're going to specialists and they're going to tell us it's fine. You're fine. Just try again. You'll get there, um, which is sometimes what you wanted to hear. So it was quite a shock when Dr. Falsking said, no, maybe you will need help to have a have a baby because he gave us the statistics based on my age and and then followed a lot of different tests and different procedures i also very naively thought you go in you start the <laughs> start the injections and then within six weeks time they will i will be pregnant <laughs> that's what it's, i think and i think that's the big thing for me um i will Maybe it's better not to know how long the journey is, but on the flip side, I think if I knew that this was, it's it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Um, and you, know, you have to prepare like you prepare for a marathon. Uh, you have to prepare like that for, for the journey. So we had three rounds. So we started in, we saw Dr. Fulskink in August of 2020 and my little boy was born October 2022. <laughs> so a lot of people have much longer journeys, but this was a, f it was a few years. And especially if you think within six weeks, I'm going to be pregnant and then it's two and a half years later. <laughs> um, yeah, so we had our first round of IVF and um, we were we had three embryos from that round that were blastocysts, so day five. But so we and we did genetic tests, the PGT tests on them because of my age, and all three of them came back as aneuploids. So that round was just, and I think it was such a shock because I've never for one second thought there wouldn't be anything to, to transfer, um, especially since we've already had a child. And I think with secondary infertility, it's also that I always felt so guilty going to Vita Lab because I've had a child and I was keenly aware that some people didn't have a child until I was in it. And I saw the other, spoke to other ladies or saw other people's stories because you start following different groups on Facebook that has to do with infertility and things. So you see other people's stories and you realize your story is sad and hard, but but there are people that's been struggling for a really long time and not have it, might, 
might not have any children or really struggling just to have one and I have one and I'm not being ungrateful and you know but again what I really appreciated from Vita Lab everybody was so supportive because I voiced how I felt and they were just like don't even think about it it's not we don't care if it's the first or the second or the fourth child it's about helping you have the family that you want or envision so i think that was also very yeah very helpful um so then we tried to get we had another round um of ivs and what i appreciated was dr fulskin changed the protocol based on what he probably my age and what happened in the first round so second round we had um seven embryos and again i thought okay <laughs> with seven how can we not be successful and then we only had one euploid embryo and i, I remember i was just so so shocked and dr foskin wasn't he was like well yes we've expected <laughs> what wow. it's like yes <laughs> This is the statistics. I kept not wanting to believe the statistics. Um and then we had that one and we transferred that one, but unfortunately it didn't it didn't result into a pregnancy. It just was just a big fat negative at the uh, when when we did the pregnancy test and I I think the other thing that was so encouraging in that journey was the day that I had my blood test I did a home pregnancy test in the morning um so that I don't sit there and wait for the, for the blood results to come back so I did it and I saw that there was it wasn't um and I sat waiting for the blood test knowing I'm probably not pregnant and Dr. Fulskin called past and he sort of looked at me questioningly thumbs up and I was like no it's not and i started tearing up and then he waited also for the blood results looked at it and then i was in the waiting room still waiting for to be told the <laughs> the news but i was crying and he actually came over and gave me a hug and he sat with me and he said to me we will get you there i will help you to be successful he was just so in that moment he was so passionate and so caring and he just gave me so much hope he was just i could see he was touched by me not being pregnant and by me being emotional and i think that's the other thing with vital lab i always felt as if i was i, I was the only patient <laughs> that that i know they have so many others but dr forsking and isme and everybody always answered emails so promptly um i got the information i needed um if i needed to be seen because i was worried about what was happening um i remember with my second round i thought that i wasn't making it, it wasn't working so i was convinced it wasn't working i was freaking out about it and dr falskin was like just come in we'll just quickly scan you and check and of course it was working i was i have i had follicles i had a lot of follicles we were like oh maybe it's too much <laughs> let me adjust it and he, there and then he called me back um i left already he looked at my things and he phoned me and said just come back quickly i want to adjust your protocol so it was so you know i don't know just that personal touch and that that really they really want you to be successful they really care about you having a family so i you know i just that was really a nice support in the whole journey and then third round we decided to take a break after the second round and we decided we will not believe the stats once again and just try on our own didn't happen and then um, after a few months break we decided we'll try it one last time we were now starting to deplete our resources <laughs> and emotionally i was also i think ready to say okay if this isn't working then then we contained with what we have this is what it's meant to be and then um that's our journey and then with the last round um we again had seven embryos and we had three euploids which was amazing um and then we also did a era and um, emma and alice test just to dot all the i's and cross all the t's and make sure that 
everything is working as it should. So again, that was also quite a long <laughs> process. We had the embryos in September and we only did the transfer in February. And again, if I think with my six week hat on, which I thought within six weeks, it takes it takes it out of you emotionally. Um, but yeah, so we had the, we knew we were successful in terms of having three embryos in September and then February after the mock cycle with the Emma and the Alice Emma and ERA test, we transferred and then um, I started doing home pregnancy tests on day five. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. <laughs> but I was just, I just wanted to really prepare myself because this was going to be the last time. I wasn't going to do another transfer. I was just, we were done. And then it was such a blessing to see that line <laughs> appear and every day that line appeared. And I was so relaxed, I remember, with the blood test um, because it was like, this is it. I know, now I'm pregnant. Um, but then because with my miscarriages, I also had a positive pregnancy test, but then with the one miscarriage, there wasn't a heartbeat when we went back for the or when we had the nine nine week scan. So I was petrified that, um, so for me it felt with this journey, there's always, as soon as you celebrate something, there's another, okay, we, we over this hurdle, but there are still so many hurdles along the way. So you can celebrate this hurdle, but you're not in the clear yet. You're not, you can't fully go, okay, it's done. It, there's there's another one coming that that might just throw everything thing out so i was happy i'm pregnant it worked but now it was like okay now we need to have a heartbeat <laughs> and that heartbeat needs to continue um and everything needs to be be progressively fine so i remember poor dr falskenk i emailed him nearly every week and it's like i don't think there's are i don't know there's no heartbeat i'm i don't think there's a heartbeat <laughs> so he made me come in <laughs> for another scan and he did say to me you're not going to see your we're not going to see a heartbeat today we're just going to see that there is something happening a fetal sac or and we saw that and then the next week he said okay then we'll hopefully see a heartbeat now and he was again he was so he, he prepared me every time what I was going to see on the scan or wasn't going to see on the scan <laughs> what he hoped to see yeah so and then we did get a heartbeat And it was quite daunting leaving Vita Lab because I think everybody is so, so supportive, want you to be successful. Everyone's so friendly and so helpful. And one of the ladies, oh, I can't remember her name now, who used to who always work with the doctors on that side when you go for your checkups or your... So it's not one of the coordinators. She, after my era, um, Dr. Falsking said to me, just lie down for five minutes and then you can get up. And I was just, I just got so overwhelmed in that moment, just thinking this was now a mock cycle. It could have been a transfer and this is so long to wait. And what, ugh, I was just so overwhelmed and just so overcame with emotion, just started to cry. And the this lady came in and she was like, oh, you're okay. And she, she just got me some water and tried to, just to console me and comfort me. And then she told Dr. Foskink and he actually came in, into the room and said, what's happening? Are you okay? And so it was just that, yeah, they never, I never felt they were like, okay, get out of the room. You're just another number. I need to see the next one. So I think that was, that was quite use, helpful in the journey. I don't think I would have been able to go through three rounds if I wasn't with a clinic that had all that people that were just in it, I think, I want to say for the right reasons. I think it's such a, it's such a personal journey and there's no right or wrong. There, I remember for myself, sometimes I needed to be with a group of women or in a circle of people that understood, that really understood that's going through the same thing. So then I found, Facebook, like Facebook groups or WhatsApp groups from Vitalab quite really useful and helpful because people know what you're going through. You feel you don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to tell your whole story or validate your emotions or anything. You can just be. Where at other times that got too much for me as well. Sometimes that was just too much and I felt it made me, I, I can't just forget about it and 
and live my life without ha- that cloud hanging over me the whole time. So then I had to withdraw from that groups. Um, but but I had to I had to continuously go between them at various different times for me to feel okay. And I think there's no I think there's no unfortunately no standard. This is what you need to do. This is what you say. This is who you tell. This is who you don't tell, so that you will be okay. It it differs with it. for me. It differs with every round. So with one round, I would have wa- I wanted to surround myself with people that understood. With another round, I didn't want to tell anyone. I just wanted to do it and then continue with my life so that I don't get so immersed or surrounded with it um, that I can just focus on other things and not feel that this is taking over my life. So I think my advice is there's no wrong or right. You need to do what's right for you at that moment.